uh, yeah. So first, I will explain the high level uh, what we are planning to do here. So in this practical, we will be like uh, using a KUKA LWAR arm to perform forward kinematics and uh, like visualize it in our wrist. So before moving forward, uh, let's see what is this, what is meant by these KUKA robots or KUKA arms. So KUKA is kind of a, a large scale robotics manufacturer uh, in the industry. So basically if you get to know any, I mean, car companies like Toyota, Tesla. So most of these companies use uh, arms and uh, these kind of robots in their uh, manufacturing warehouses. So, so that this is, uh, I mean, there are several versions based on how much uh, weight that the arm should be lifting and how much it should extract uh, from the length of the uh, fixing point. So likewise, there are different types of arms, these uh, robotic uh, KUKA uh, company manufacturers. So we will be using one of these uh, arms in today's practical. Uh, right. So in the previous session, like uh, you got to know many concepts behind ROS uh, and also some important tools in ROS as well. So I hope you get uh, some basic understanding on that because those are really uh, basic, uh, basically the fundamentals of ROS. So knowing that will definitely help uh, you get uh, to, your, I mean, to increase your knowledge in ROS in the future. So however, this one, uh, we will not going to go in depth uh, because due to this limited time and the complexity uh, of the practical. So because basically you uh, in order to look correctly, identify all the stuff, then you should have a good knowledge of theories, uh, but we don't want to like confuse you on them. So you can learn them on the go. And if you have done uh, some time, then you can go in depth and understand as well later. So the main goal in this session is to show the importance of uh, forward kinematics and how to use it in ROS and give you an understanding on uh, like how uh, different components in ROS can be like interconnected uh, to get something into working condition, even though you don't know the underlying concept. So that is the uh, basically the magic in ROS. So even though you don't need, uh, don't know something in with an in-depth knowledge, still you can use because already uh, those are implemented in this open source uh, ROS software. So right, uh, let's move forward. So in order to do this practical, uh, you will first uh, be needing some resource folders. So I hope you have this PDF. Anyways, I will uh, share this link in the chat. So kindly go to that link and download the uh, folders in that link. So I'll be giving you like around one to two minutes. So if someone can verify whether you have downloaded correctly, uh, please send me a direct message so that I know you guys are following it me. And once you download it, then extract the uh, file as well. That I'll wait until 4 p.m. Uh, so please download the source files and extract it into your in any preferred location. Okay, right. So the next step is to uh, open ROSDS. So you have already now experience with the ROSDS. So let's first create a project. So here, since you guys have used Roskinetic earlier, uh, use Roskinetic in this one, uh, and only use Roskinetic because some packages are we have created are specifically uh, compilable only for Roskinetic here. So use Kinetic in this version, uh, this project, and uh, give whatever the name you like. Uh, and any description also you like. And then create a ROS jet. 
Right, so you can see now the rustic is created. So run it. So as you saw, like this RosDS is actually a really good tool for people who want to learn many robotics concepts easily, like uh, without installing Ubuntu on their computer, because installing Ubuntu on some laptops might become a tough process as well. Uh, and also like uh, other than this, uh, their, their interface, uh, if you explore a little in RosDS, you can find many interesting courses on this platform as well, uh, where you can like learn more about ROS and even ROS2 as well. Right, so since this is launched, I will close this Jupyter Notebook because we don't need that part. Uh, let's open a terminal and our IDE. So hope you guys now know, understand about what are the tools here because in the previous session, we have introduced you to them. Right. So you already know our current working directory is Catkin workspace. So if you expand a little bit, uh, you can see the three types of folders that uh, Dr. Peshala has also uh, explained in the morning session. So here, as you can see, there is nothing inside the source folder. So now it is the time to get the folders inside that uh, downloaded link in the GitHub. So extract those things. And so I will be adding my files to this one. So once you extract it, that uh, zip file, you will get the source folder, then drag it and drop it in the Catkin workspace. As you can see, then it will ask like uh, already exit in the destination folder. Do you want to replace it? Then uh, click replace file as well. Right. So hope you guys are following me. So now, as you can see, uh, there are like uh, four types of packages uh, we have. Uh, for our folders in this uh, the GitHub link that we have provided. So there is a folder called Forval Kinematics. So it uh, includes a Python file uh, and we can later see what it does in a high level manner. And then let's open this uh, LWR robot, LWR robot. So we can see uh, there are some folders inside this as well. Uh, so if you open the robots files, you can see uh, the URDF file of that particular robot. So let's open it to see what is inside it. So as you can see, uh, this is kind of a huge file and uh, with today's time, we don't have enough time to go through it. Uh, just look at it. If you are interested in learning URDF, then uh, let us try to go through it and understand uh, because making and uh, writing URDF files are kind of a separate task uh, when you are working with ROS. But anyways, I uh, will give you some introduction into some parts of this code as well. Right, uh, and then we have robot mover and robot sim packages. Uh, some uh, these are some of the two packages that we will be uh, needing in later in order to do the simulation work. So we can come back to them later. Uh, so let's go to the PDF. Uh, so yeah, I think we are in this step, and I have shown you the uh, picture as well. So let's uh, install these commands. So let's copy and paste. So this uh, URDF uh, OMPI is actually used for uh, converting the URDF information into a Python structure. As you know, robot description files are usually uh, written using URDF and sacral languages. So by using this URDF OM package, uh, we can convert those uh, robot models into a Python structure, and then uh, you can easily use with uh, your algorithms written in Python. And so that is what this uh, package basically do. Right. So what's the same? So uh, then we have to like get can make our workspace because we have added those source files. Now we have to get can make and build those files. So let's move on to the get can workspace. Right. Yeah, so now the packages are building. So uh, in here, I want to uh, emphasize one thing. So if the ROS version is different, uh, then this might not compile correctly. Then you have to adjust your packages inside the source file to make it compile uh, on that particular version. So that is the 
uh, that is uh, we have to be careful when you are dealing with uh, ROS because uh, there are several kind of versions. So if you are uh, some uh, sometimes some packages might work in all the versions, but sometimes it is not. So you have to be careful about that. So okay, I'm getting the message. Uh, right. So before moving further, uh, I will give you guys like two to three minutes to do this uh, and come up to here. And again, I'm asking, please send me a message to verify whether you guys are following. So I will continue at four, seven, four, eight, or one and a half minutes are there. Uh, please come up to this step. Uh, and someone have asked me to like follow up the six, uh, steps again from the beginning. So while the other guys are compiling the workspace, I will explain the steps. Right, okay. So basically you first you have to download the source files from this GitHub link. And then you uh, you have to create a ROS jet, uh with Ubuntu 16.0 and ROS kinetic. Please uh, be aware about that. And then once you created that, uh, in this, uh, the files that you have downloaded from this GitHub link, you will, uh, once you extract it, you will find a folder called source folder. So drag and drop into this Catkin workspace, and then you will come up to here. So you will see this folder structure and then, uh, type these three commands and then you will be, uh, you will like, uh, build those source folders. Right. So I'm getting messages that, uh, will have done the things okay right <laughs> sorry okay i'll move forward so this is our project task one so we have to like implement uh forward kinematics for our kuka arm so i already told you that we already have a urdf file of this uh real robot with us and you already uh, saw that uh, and now we have already compiled it at it as well. So to use with our uh, mathematics and calculations. So we will be using uh, that model in our hands-on session. So uh, these are the actually the commands that uh, uh, we are planning to run uh, during this session. So let's see uh, what this uh, robot simkuka lwr.launch file means because that is the main file that we are planning to write, uh, run and this solution we will be discussing later. Okay. How about this one? So I hope you can see, the, yeah, I'm getting another message, okay. Okay, you guys are good to go now. Uh, right. So as explained in the previous session as well, and in the morning sessions, uh, these launch files are kind of, uh, uh, will provide you a convenient way to start up uh, multiple nodes uh, and a master as well. Uh, and also if you require any other initialization requirements such as these uh, parameters and stuff, then you can uh, launch them using these launch files as well. So that is the convenience of using uh, launch files. So let's see uh, by going through each and every line. So at the beginning, uh, we can see a variable called this uh, robot uh, description, right? And also a path to our URDF file that uh, which I have showed you a couple of minutes ago. So what does this line do? As you know, URDF contains information uh, about how uh, the robot is modeled. Basically, uh, you can visualize and define where the joints of your robot are and what types of joints are there and uh, what directions they should rotate or expand, et cetera, like using this uh, URDF file. So in the morning session, we briefly went through it as well. So anyways, I will open it, open our URDF file as well. Right, so hope you can see the screen, yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, this is kind of a large file. Uh, so here you can see some of the information says material. So I'll let you know what these materials means. So basically these are some of the colors and stuff that we are using in our robot. So that is why once we uh, do the final simulation, we will get to see 
those colors in our simulation. Uh, so you have understand, I will explain how two links are uh, and a joint are interconnected and how to use URDF to connect those two links with a joint. Uh, let's select some of joint. Uh, yeah, so let's consider uh, this joint. So this is the kind of <coughs> Uh, a joint that we have created, right? So as you can see here, we have uh, given the name of this joint as arm third joint and made its type as a revolute, right? Revolute means rotating. So here we are creating a joint uh, which can be uh, which can be rotated, right? And its axis of rotation, uh, as you can see, is uh, the in the minus y direction. And also some joint limitations are added as well. Uh, considering the whole arm. So in the morning session, you saw what this means. I mean, what are these limitations mean? If you, if, uh, if you consider our arm also, we cannot like uh, move anywhere in any direction as we want. It has some limitations. So likewise in robotics arms also, they have uh, limitations. So, uh, and the most important part is uh, this one, right? These two lines, it says the parent link and the child link. So since this is the third joint, its parent is the third link in the arm. And when the joint rotates, it will change the position of the link four. And that is why we have set it as the child link, this arm link. So for your convenience, I will uh, draw on the screen as well. Uh, hope you guys can see the screen. My drawing might not be good, uh, but I will try to. So let's say your joint is here. My drawings are shown in the screen, right? Can you, any, anyone confirm? Yes, Charles, we can. Ah, right, thank you, sir. So this is the link three, and this is link four, right? So that is why uh, what we have mentioned in here, right? And the joint, this is the joint three. So as you know, this is the parent, and this is the child, right? And since this is a revolute joint, uh, when uh, this joint moves and the child will uh, change its position. So that is basically uh, what uh, this small part says, right? So that I just want to give you a high level understanding of this uh, URDF. It's very clear that part. And then uh, let's uh, briefly uh, look at uh, how a link is modeled. So this is the link as you can see. Uh, so you already know what inertial means. Uh, they means the physical properties of the link such as the uh, mass of the uh, link and where the center of mass is located likewise. And visual you already also know in the morning session uh, means uh, how to display this link on Arvis and Gasibo. So here you can see we are loading uh, the geometry uh, uh, of the link as a mesh file. So usually we create these uh, mesh files from uh, 3D designing softwares like SolidWorks, uh, Unity, uh, and like a Blender, likewise softwares. Uh, and however, uh, Ross provides some basic geometry shapes like uh, as well, like these boxes, uh, uh, circles. So let's say if you want to simulate just the box, uh, then uh, these kind of things you can easily uh, found uh, inbuilt in Ross rather than like using any mesh file from uh, another software. Uh, and also you can see here, we have added a material name and the name is set to orange. So I uh, hope you remember, I showed you at the beginning of this file, we are creating a material name orange. So that is why these uh, links are shown uh, in orange. When you get to simulate this uh, project, you will see what I mean. Uh, basically the arm is shown in uh, robot uh, orange. Uh, right. So likewise, uh, basically, you know, all this collision, what this collision means and stuff. So we can define other various things based on uh, how our uh, link should operate. So I'm not going to discuss further on this. Just wanted to show that like uh, how a basic uh, link and joints are created and the way of linking them. So if you want to uh, create your own URD file, then basically you can refer this file and then change it a little bit and then try out your own. So that is why I given you some guidance. Uh, right. So let's again go to the launch file. So, so basically, you know, now there is a separate uh, URDF file. So this note, uh, which describes our robot, right? So using this line, this uh, parameter name, robot description command thing, uh, you can load your robot model into the ROS parameter server. So what is meant by ROS parameter server? 
So as Dr. Penchala, uh, Dr. Penchala like mentioned in the morning session, ROS parameter server is a, a kind of a, uh, a shared uh, multivariable API. So basically like any node uh, running in ROS can use this server to store and retrieve parameters uh, during its runtime. So if I were to kind of mention it in, mention in, in like more simple terms, uh, you can use the parameter server to store data that you want to access globally from anywhere on your uh, ROS codes. So basically, uh, the all the nodes below this parameter line, this parameter line, uh, they can use our robot model to perform their tasks. So hope you got that uh, simple idea. So following that, we have added uh, like uh, several, you can see uh, nodes which are required for today's hands-on session. So let's see what this we have next. Uh, next is the robot sim bring up. Uh, so I'll open that as well. Right. Uh, so let's move down a little bit. So these are some of the supplementary functions that we have written. So this con uh, code is kind of complex, so you don't need to understand all of them. Uh, just understand the flow of the code and how those URDFs and ROS nodes are interconnected. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, it will read from the parameter server to get the robot model uh, inside into the code. So that is why what uh, this for loop and these things do. Uh, it will get uh, read the uh, URDF model, which is in the ROS parameter server now into the code, right? Uh, normally, uh, once we like you write a ROS node, it should have like publishers or subscribers, or maybe sometimes both, likewise. So same thing following uh, in these nodes also, uh, we have some uh, subscribers and publishers. So, so these following uh, steps, we'll set up them properly. For example, like for publishing uh, joint states, as you can see here, uh, uh, basically this joint states means like uh, publishing joint sets read from the URDF model. So we, we have the URDF file and then we can read the st joint states of that URDF model. And then we need a publisher to publish those joint sets into the uh, topic of joint states, uh, right? So you will understand this later. So I'm just uh, telling you, once we have written a node, then we have some of these uh, publishers and subscribers, uh, which will uh, like uh, send and receive the data that we want to operate in the code. And then this uh, velocity controller object is responsible for like listening to the topic joint velocities and then uh, set the velocities of the robot model. And then uh, you can see this uh, position uh, controller, which is also responsible for listening to a topic and then uh, set uh, target values for each joint uh, based on the received joint position. So likewise, all the things required to simulate the robot arm uh, will be set up properly by uh, running this uh, robot sim bring up file. So again, go back to our launch file. Uh, so again, I'm explaining uh, the first line will load the URDF model into our parameter server. And then robot sim bring up node will use that model to set up the robot uh, with the necessary control variables to control it through our custom codes. So again, I'm explaining after running this uh, robot sim bring up node, we can see the states of the joints if we want, because uh, inside the node, we have created a joint state publisher, which publishes the state, uh, like uh, states of the states of each joint into a ROS topic, right? I showed you that part. And also since it has a velocity controller, uh, we can set uh, send like uh, velocity commands to convert uh, to control the arm. So likewise, we have set up all the required uh, topics to control that arm from external, right? So then uh, we have this uh, forward kinematics joint uh, node, so which I will explain later. But uh, as the name suggests, it is the node that handles the forward kinematics part. And then then we have like this robot mover node, uh, which will uh, publish velocity commands to move the robot. And finally, the RVS node, uh, which we require in order to like uh, visualize the uh, robot in RVS and its actions. So again, like look at this structure, like you can see the URDF file is launched and uh, loaded into the parameter server. And then uh, robot sim, uh, sim bring up node will like use that robot to uh, get into the code. And then uh, it will create all the necessary uh, topics, publishers, subscribers, which are needed to control the uh, robot uh, from externally. 
and then we have our own codes which we will use uh, we, like we, we will be using those nodes uh, to send commands and receive commands from this robots in bring up node so that is basically the high level overview so it's again what is the pdf right so we were here so now let's run these commands to see what will happen so you know why we need to uh, source this folder uh, this file so there's another method as well so you don't need to like uh, run every time this uh, command when you are uh, open a new terminal you can uh, if you can add this file to the bash rc file so if you are a ubuntu familiar guy uh, then you can uh, copy and paste this thing into the your bash rc then you don't need to like run these commands that uh, when each of the time you open a new terminal right uh, you already know what we are doing here as well. I will. I didn't explain it the, yet. The solution by file. Just run it. So we are giving executable. That is why plus x is there. So we are giving uh, executable permission for that Python file. And then let's run this file. So now the visualizer is opening Arvis. So I hope you guys uh, see my screen and the robot arm is moving. So as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, these uh, orange colors and these ash colors, like you are seeing because of the URDF file you have uh, implemented those colors uh, as per your link. Uh, so again, I'll give you like two minutes to come up to this point. So let me know if you have any questions up to here uh, until that. Uh, please follow up to that point. I mean, in the PDF, you have to come up to here. Uh, some questions, okay. Okay, you guys are following, that's a good thing. So I start at And send me a message if you have done up to that part so that I can verify. I told you I'm getting messages, so that means you guys are following. Right. So I'll continue. So, so let's see. So as you can see, uh, the robot is kind of moving between uh, one point. I mean, the end defector is moving between one point and another. So that is basically done by this practical, right? Uh, <coughs> so let's see the TF tree of this. So in order to understand the better. So you can uh, add the TF topic by using the click this add. And here you can uh, scroll down a bit and then you will find TF, right? So now you can see the TF tree. So we don't need the names. We will only be requiring this, uh, right? Maybe this and we don't need the arrows. Just, yeah, so that will do. Right, so you already saw this in the morning sessions as well. Now I hope 
uh, you will get understanding about what this means. This is the, just the uh, TF3. So this is how all the links are interconnected. Uh, so as you can see, this end effector is kind of moving between two points. And when that points is changing, all the joint variables are changing as well, as you can see. Right. So let's open a new one. So let's see what are the topics that we have. So you already know the command plus topic list. So these are the topics that uh, the whole uh, system is publishing and subscribing. So that is why we can see them here. So let's echo TF to see what is happening. Right, so I'll stop this again. Uh, right. Okay. Right, so let's understand what uh, this TF means. So uh, let's consider an example. Let's say uh, the okay, food value may be zero. Oh, let's consider it from this example. So let's say uh, the robot joint, uh, the, this road joint value changes, right? The more they are, I mean, in every joint you have a motor. So that motor is the one that will be changed its position, the shaft position. So that is accordingly, we will uh, move the robot down. So let's say, assume uh, the joint road joint value change. So how it will affect the end effect and how uh, our algorithm knows that. Because without our algorithm knows that we cannot properly visualize it, right? Uh, and also we cannot use in our calculation if we don't know what happens next, right? So, I mean, in the real robot, you can give a, uh, uh, give a velocity command or motor control command to control the robot. Mathematics, uh, which we uh, explained in the morning session. Uh, we give a brief understanding. Uh, basically, what when, when we are given with joint angles, uh, we can calculate uh, the position of uh, the end effector with respect to the root frame. Uh, so I have created a small, uh, I actually just created this. I will share again, just wait. A small paint, a hand-drawn one, so that uh, you can get a better understanding. Uh, right. So I thought of uh, uh, telling this because if you are like hearing this word forward kinematics for the first time, it will be hard for you to understand. So here, uh, first look at the initial position uh, figure. This is the initial position figure. So as we can see, the robot has three joints. First one, second one, and th uh, third one. And assume they all are revolute, right? They are revolute means the there's a motor and we can uh, rotate around that axis. And here uh, I'm like uh, fixing only the, uh, the we can revolute around only Y axis. So the first joint can revolute around Y axis, second one also can around uh, revolute around Y and this one also can rotate around Y, right? So uh, note that uh, in this example, we are not going to rotate the third joint, okay? Only the first and the second one we are going to rotate. Now let's consider uh, this uh, second figure. So let's go through it. Uh, at the first joint, uh, we are rotating a theta one angle around this uh, y axis, and our whole arm uh, will be uh, will come to this position, right? As you can see. And then again, we will rotate on the second joint, and then the remaining part uh, of that uh, arm will be come to this new position. So if we don't rotate that, uh, it will be positioned here. I mean, if 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 I didn't uh, rotate the theta two angle. Uh, this part will be here, right? I hope you can understand. Uh, but now since we have a theta two angle, uh, which is a positive angle, uh, sorry, uh, this is, which is not a non-zero angle, so the, it will come here, right? Uh, so as then as I mentioned uh, already earlier, we will not rotate the third joint. So it will stay as it is aligned with the z-axis as in the 
uh, initial position. So you can see this part is same as this part aligned with the C-axis because we didn't rotate uh, this joint, even though it has the capability to uh, rotate, right? So now by look, uh, look at this uh, red dotted line, right? By looking at this red line, we can see the position of the end effector with respect to the rope root, right? So this is correctly displayed because we followed the correct order and then uh, we can uh, find where our uh, end effector with respect to our root position. So now let's assume uh, we haven't updated the first joint rotation, right? As you can see here uh, in this uh, third figure, I hope you can see, uh, we like haven't marked theta one angle. Right. So we, we, because of that, it's still in, it's still the same as the first figure. Right. Uh, my uh, can anywhere see my uh, mouse pointer? Uh, can someone verify? Uh, I yes, I think we can see a mouse pointer. All right. Then, right. Then it is fine. Right. So uh, as you. As I mentioned earlier, so, so even though we have uh, the, the, the correct thing is to like uh, rotate theta one, we haven't uh, rotated that amount. So that is why uh, we can, this initial position is same as we can see here because we haven't done that. But now then uh, we can, we have rotated theta two as uh, in the second figure. So now we can uh, see the end defectors position is like here. So is this correct now? No, right? Because I, I mean, you have maybe in your real robot, you have given commands to rotate the first joint in by theta one and the second joint by that theta two. But in your calculation, in your mathematical code and or, or else the visualizer, you haven't properly like uh, added that theta one, right? So you only have, have added theta two. So then what happens? Your whole calculation will be wrong, right? Your end defector is uh, in your mathematics, mathematics, or I mean, in your visualizer, your end defector is, will be positioned here. But in the real world, in the real world, the robot position is here. So these are kind of completely two positions. So that is why uh, uh, we have to use forward kinematics, uh, right? So uh, if you are to like uh, correctly, track, uh, correctly track your robot's end defector position when any one of the joint position changes, then you have to use forward kinematics. Otherwise, your algorithm or whatever the thing you are going to do uh, with your code uh, will be a completely wrong thing. So that is why forward kinematics and this uh, kinematics change are, are helpful for using these kind of tasks. Uh, so right. So again, I will go back to the same thing. Okay, Right. So basically at the end, I want to say forward kinematics will allow us to find the end defector position uh, with respect to the base frame uh, when the angles are kind of uh, changing. Right. So again, I will show another one. Uh, So as you can see, uh, please look at the, this uh, terminal. So here we are changing the motor position. As you can see, uh, the positions of this, the, so this zero means the zero uh, motor's position. This is the first motor's position, second motor's position, likewise, okay? Uh, so here we are changing the motor position uh, at these joints from zero to minus one. So as you can see, now it is minus one and now it is zero, right? So likewise, we are changing zero to minus one. Uh, and then uh, on the other, uh, vice versa. So that is why we can see the robot arm correctly moves because uh, we can relate the position change from one joint to another using the forward kinematics. So if you don't have the forward kinematics code running, you cannot see this properly, right? Because when joint values are changes, the end defector position will affect that. So you have to implement forward kinematics in order to correctly visualize in, in the arms, right? So, now let's see how those uh, forward kinematics are correctly handled in order to like display uh, the robot moving correctly. So I will stop this and go to the solution.py file.
forward kinematics. This one, right? So this is the uh, Python file which handles the uh, forward kinematics. So let's see the contents of this folder, uh, this file. So as you already know, we are changing the values of each joint from zero to minus one in order to like move the robot arm from that one position to the other, right? So then, uh, first of all, what do you think we were in this Python ship, uh, script should do? So now you have a robot and it's uh, and uh, we are giving it uh, motor commands and it's changing its position. And also it has a publisher which state all the joint states as well. So in your Python script, what uh, do you think we should do first? So we first, in our Python code, we should identify there is a change in the joint positions, right? So otherwise we cannot do forward kinematic. So that is why we have created a subscriber, as you can see here, uh, for the joint states topic. So this script will be notified every time a joint value is published by the robot. Right. So hope you get uh, understand. And once a joint value is received, it will immediately call this uh, function called callback. Right. So let's see what it does. This is the function. So in the callback function, it will first uh, create a list, uh, like saying how the order of joints are there in the actual robot uh, with the help of the uh, URDF file. And then based on that uh, list and the received joint values, it will make the TF tree correctly uh, and then publish the transformation as a TF message. So as you can see, uh, this, this is the function that will do that calculation. So like in order to understand this correctly, you should have uh, some knowledge on the transformations and kinematic chains, but I'm giving this brief explanation so that uh, with the comments also, we have added some uh, good comments as well. Uh, if you want to later go through it uh, and then you can understand. So you don't need to like worry too much about this code. So basically what it does is when a joint value changes, this code will be notified and then it will like iterate through each and every joint and understand, okay, this joint has changed uh, from the, this value to this value. And the second joint has changed from this value to this value. So it will first understand uh, what are the changes happened in that arm. And then based on that, it will do the forward kinematics and understand, okay, now, where is the end defector position with respect to the root? So that is what basically this uh, solution.py file does, basically the forward kinematics. Uh, right. So that's about the first practical. I think it's uh, around 440. So, so hope you guys have got up to this point. Can you like give me a message or verifying whether you guys are following up to this part? Uh, again, asking, can we get a recording from this? Yeah, I think uh, SLRs organizers, you can ask them. So can a couple of you guys like confirm whether you guys followed up to that part? So then I can move forward. Yes, right. All right, thank you. So I'm getting messages. That's a good thing. So basically, uh, again, I'm saying that's the beauty of Inros. So even though you don't uh, understand the underlying concepts, you can use, I, I mean, if you can find a good package uh, related to your ROS application, then you can like download it and then basically high level understand what is happening there. And then you can modify it into a, according to your work. And then even though you don't have a like proper in-depth understanding about the mathematics and stuff, still you can use it with your application. So that is why uh, we, are, we are doing these practicals as well, uh, because it's, uh, so for a beginner, you might think, okay, how, how, how I'm going to like simulate a robot, uh, KUKA arm, but, but by doing this practical, you can understand, right? So that is the magic in ROS. Uh, right, so now let's see what to do in the second part of our uh, hands-on session. So in the earlier part, there was a script running underneath, uh, which sends the position commands to our arm. So that is why uh, we saw our arms joint values kind of varying from zero to minus one and then minus one to zero again, right? So I didn't uh, show you the I think. So that is done by this robot mover, fine, right? So if you want to like uh, go and have a look at it. So this is the uh, file that uh, since those velocity commands and uh, and when when we are launching the 
koka lwr dot launch file you saw that uh, we are launching that node as well so that is why uh, even though you didn't see okay from where did these velocity commands came but uh, this is the not that uh, in that part it is kind of hidden so you can uh, guys can uh, go have a look at it if you want so that is basically what happened in the first practical right so but in the second one uh, we will not do that what we will do is manually we will send joint values and see how the robot moves so let's uh, check that commands we want to run here so you can see these are the basic commands so uh, here we are running a new script called uh, position command.py. So uh, this will create a small GUI where you can adjust the positions of each joint uh, in the arm manually. So this is just a screenshot of it. So once we run all those commands, you will see and you will get to uh, do it on your own. And then uh, we are launching another launch file. So uh, let's go and see the contents of this launch file. Right. So so what is the command to stop the running code? You can go to the terminal and uh, so there's a question. So if there's a running script, then you can like control C. Control C will uh, stop any uh, running script. OK. Uh, in the slide or do they said they will upload the record into the youtube channel i think uh, uh, slrc organizers can answer that question i mean i i think the recordings are going to be uploaded in the youtube right okay again back into the practical so this is the launch file that we have uh, run earlier and this is the new so can you guys see the difference now what happened so Parameter server, uh, robot sim bring up, forward kinematics, all are same. Right? What is the difference? And RVS is also same because RVS is the one that, uh, that the node that we need to like visualize this stuff. So the only difference is this uh, robot move, right? So I already mentioned you that uh, we are not going to send velocity commands through a node now. What we are doing to, going to do is like we will manually send those velocity commands, right? Uh, so that is why we have removed that part uh, not from here, but we have added this robot state publisher. So this is, uh, you don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, this is just a node which allows us to publish the state of robot. So this is not a big deal, but this is a big deal. Uh, but by removing this part, we are, we, 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 the, the, you will not see the robot going to be moving. Right. So now, since you have a high level idea of the changes from the previous, uh, launch file, uh, let's run those command to see what we can uh, do. Okay, so it's better to source anyways. So we have to first go to see, okay, CD. We can. So one, yeah. One student asked the question of how to kill that. So I just type control C, okay? So since this terminal is already, okay, I'll do it again. Otherwise, you will get confused. I do this with me. So we are uh, doing executable permission for this position command pi uh, file. So it's also just a simple Python file. Uh, so can you guys uh, like think what will happen if I run this script by looking at these terminals? So I have only these two minerals running. So if I run this one, what will happen? Can anyone answer me? I mean, it doesn't need any understanding of the code. I'm just asking one of the basic thing. Uh, someone is saying nothing. <laughs> okay. Just look at these uh, terminals. These are empty terminals. So what will happen if I run ROS run? On, again, I'm highlighting some point, ROS run. In the previous session, Deepan explained this a little bit. So again, I'll run and show you what will happen. 
So you can see unable to register with master node because I haven't run ROS core. So if you are running a ROS launch, then you can, uh, your code will work because ROS launch will automatically uh, run uh, launch, uh, rise, ROS, up, rise up a ROS master, but ROS run will not do that. Uh, so, so you have to like control C. Okay, uh, first you have to run Rosco and set up a master and then only you can run that previous command. I'm just reminding those basics though. Right. And here we have another launch file. So let's go to CD get more space. Right. So now, as you can see, the robot is not uh, moving, right? You can see now at the earlier version, the robot was moving, but now it is not. So instead we are getting a GUI. So I told you that uh, that position command Python file, it will create a GUI. And what it basically do is uh, when we change this joint value, it will publish to uh, this uh, robotics, uh, this robot term so that it will update its position. So earlier it was done automatically by the robot mover code, but now here we are doing it manually. Uh, so let's change it to minus one, all thing, because in the earlier version, you saw the minus one position and zero position. Let's see that we can obtain the same thing. and the send button. So as you can see, now we can see the same end effector position as we saw in the last version. So now uh, uh, let's uh, again to understand your, uh, to give you more understanding about the forward kinematics, let's start to change value from the root. Okay. So as you can see, so I'm changing only the root. Root means the zero joint, right? So when we change the joint value of the root, only that motor rotates, right? Only that uh, joint zero you can see, right? Other joints are not uh, doing anything. Yeah. Uh, but when it rotates, what happened? All the robot term from that point onward is getting affected. So that is the importance of using forward kinematics. So when we change one variable joint by using the forward kinematics, we can see how that change will vary the end effector. So that is why you, you are uh, correctly seeing this. If you, if we haven't run that solution.py file, which in, in uh, which includes the forward kinematics parts, you don't uh, get to see this. So I hope from this example, you are understanding got uh, into a high level. So basically uh, without our forward kinematics code, even though the robot model changed joint values, uh, we will not be able to visualize it correctly. As we don't know how one joint change affect the other joint and subsequently uh, to the end effect. So that's basically all about this hands-on session. So hope you got some insights. As I mentioned earlier, this is done in a really high level manner. Uh, but in the session one, we went to uh, went into more depth there as it is the most. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, shall we also uh, change some of the middle joints and uh, show? Yeah. So as you can see, uh, when this motor join uh, the value change, only from there onwards, uh, the arm got affected, uh, will be uh, getting affected. So anyways, that, that change will affect the end effector. So even though you change the middle one, then. Okay. Whatever the joint value changes, end effector will definitely be affected. So without forward kin kinematics, you will not be able to uh, get the correct position of the end effector.
as you can see the arm is moving as well uh yeah so that's basically it. so you can try this on your own as well i hope all the codes are going to be working with you guys as well so i got many messages uh saying that the code is working and you guys were following uh right so i i was saying that in the first practical we went into kind of a more depth because these uh, those are the kind of the most fundamental things uh by the time you can master them and then come up to this level uh but again i'm mentioning this is the uh, magic kin ross where you you don't need to like uh, learn all the underlying concepts uh first you can try it your own and then you can get a high level understanding of what is happening and then you can go in depth according to your specialized area because ross is kind of a multidisciplinary field so you can focus on one thing and the parts that you don't know you can get the help from uh, available resources in ross uh yeah so that's basically it um, and thank you for listening to my session <laughs>